Let us start this video with a question. Pause the video here and draw the Lewis dot structure of ozone molecule following the guidelines that we discussed in the earlier video. We start by placing the least electronegative atom in the center. Since all the three atoms are oxygens that have same electronegativity, I will place one of them in the center and the remaining two on the sides. Then count the total number of valence electrons. Oxygen belongs to group 6a, therefore it has six valence electrons and I have 3 oxygens, therefore in total I have 18 valence electrons. Use the valence electrons to connect the terminal atoms to the central atom by a single bond. We used up 4 electrons in doing so. The remaining valence electrons are 14. I am going to place the remaining valence electrons on the terminal atoms first as electron pairs until each of the terminal atoms reach octet. I start with one of the oxygens, place six electrons and six more electrons on the other oxygen. Both the terminal oxygens have now eight electrons in their valence shell. I used up 12 valence electrons and there are two valence electrons remaining which I will place on the central atom as an electron pair. We used up all the electrons. Let's verify if each of the atoms is an octet. Both the terminal oxygen atoms are octet. However, the central atom is short of two electrons to attain an octet configuration. That means we need to transfer one of the electron pairs from the terminal atom as a multiple bond between the central atom and the respective terminal atom. Now the question is, there are two terminal oxygen atoms. From which oxygen do we need to transfer the electron pair from? If we transfer the electron pair from the oxygen on the left, we get the following structure. And if we transfer the electron pair from the oxygen on the right, we get the following structure. These are both reasonable Lewis dot structures for the same molecule. However, neither of the structures is an accurate depiction of ozone. The normal oxygen-oxygen single bond measures 148 picometer and oxygen-oxygen double bond measures 121 picometers. So, you would expect the ozone molecule to have two different bond lengths and two different bond energies. In reality, the oxygen-oxygen bond lengths in ozone are identical at 128 picometers and the bond energies are also identical. These experimental values cannot be explained by either of the two Lewis dot structures. Therefore, we use a concept called as resonance to explain these experimental observations. According to the concept of resonance, the correct description of ozone is not given by either of the two Lewis structures individually, but it is described only by the superposition or average of the two structures. That is, the ozone molecule doesn't exist as either one of the structures, but as an average of both the structures. The two valid Lewis dot structures are usually referred to as resonance structures. Note that the resonance structures have same arrangement of atoms, but different placement of electrons. A double-headed arrow is placed between these two structures to show the resonance. 
and the average structure is called as resonance hybrid. Keep in mind that the ozone does not change back and forth between the two resonance forms. Lewis dot structures depict electrons as localized between a given pair of atoms as bond pairs or on an individual atom as a lone pair. However, in nature, the electrons are delocalized, that is, their density is spread over the entire molecule. The delocalized electrons are represented by dotted lines. We have already discussed what a bond order is, that is, the number of electron pairs shared between a pair of atoms. Let us calculate the bond order for ozone molecule. Since the actual structure of ozone can be explained as an average or superposition of the two resonance structures, let us imagine the two resonance structures of ozone superimposed on each other. Now, between the center oxygen and oxygen on the right, how many electron pairs are there in both the structures combined? The answer is 3 electron pairs in 2 structures. So, for each structure, on an average, there is 1.5 electron pairs, which is the bond order for the right bond. And you can do the same thing for the left bond as well. We will get the same bond order of 1.5. And that is why the experimentally determined bond lengths are the same. If it is difficult for you to imagine the superposition structure, you can use the following formula to calculate the bond order. Bond order is equal to the total number of electron pairs shared in one resonance structure divided by the number of bonded pairs of atoms in the resonance structure. Let us calculate the bond order using this formula. In either of the resonance structures, there are, in total, three electron pairs that are being shared between two pairs of atoms. Therefore, the bond order is 1.5. Let us do another example problem. Write resonance structures for carbonate ion, that is CO3 2 minus, and find the bond order. Here are the resonance structures and the bond order. 